All right, hello everybody. This is October's virtual meeting for Irish Studies. My name is Claire Bradley. Uh, this will be a 30 minute session. Um, I want to start off the evening by asking if anyone has any particular questions or problems that they want to raise with any course material. Um, please speak now. No, okay, well, that's fine. Um, tonight's session, is going to be about Church of Ireland records. Now, last month, you'll remember, we talked about Catholic records and Church of Ireland is the second largest religious denomination in Ireland, but it is substantially smaller than that of Catholicism. The majority of uh, Protestants, as we would call them in Ireland, are Northern, so they would be in Ulster, but there are small uh, pockets of them everywhere in Ireland, uh, particularly in the cities and Dublin and uh, Cork and Limerick and so on. So let's have a little chat first about uh, the issues surrounding uh, Protestant records. And then I'm going to show you where you can find them on the internet, which is to say that they are not all on the internet. So this is not something like Catholic records where we have a large body of material online to interrogate. So the reason that we don't have a large uh, repository of Church of Ireland material is that the Church of Ireland was the state church of Ireland. And that meant that the records of the Church of Ireland were to be deposited in the public records office in Dublin. And the public records office in Dublin was blown up in the Irish Civil War in June 1922. It's the same explosion that destroyed many of the 19th century censuses for Ireland. Now, the Church of Ireland registers that were in the Public Records Office were from before 1870. And the reason that they cut off at 1870 is that the uh, Church of Ireland was disestablished as the state Church of Ireland in that period. So after that, they didn't have a requirement to keep the records anymore. There was also an allowance made where a local clergyman could demonstrate that he could store the records safely and securely. So, you know, they'd write and they'd say, we've got a good, strong, dry room with a lock on it. And this is where all the records are kept. And those people were allowed to keep their uh, records uh, in their home parish in what we would call local custody. And that meant that 637 parishes were not in the public records office when it was destroyed in June 1922. However, that's only about two fifths of all the Church of Ireland parishes that exist in Ireland. So it is a substantial loss, but a substantial loss tempered by the fact that the vast majority of people in Ireland were not a member of that denomination. The surviving registers that exist for the Church of Ireland are in a couple of different places. There is a very small collection in the National Archives of Ireland in Dublin. There is a much larger collection in the Representative Church Body Library um, in Dublin, which is often just known as the RCB Library. And we're going to look at their website now in a moment. And the parts of um, the island that are belonging to Northern Ireland, the six counties of Ulster, the six of the nine counties of Ulster, their records are in Prony, the Public Records Office of Northern Ireland in Belfast, and their records are not online. Um, there are also two other websites where you can find Church of Ireland records, and we're going to go through all of those now. Despite this loss, and, and it is a large loss, Church, rec Church of Ireland records do go back quite a bit further than Catholic records. And we talked last time about the penal laws and how that affected Catholics' ability to safely and openly practice their religion and impacted them by not writing down evidence of their practice. So they weren't keeping parish records. That wasn't a problem for the Church of Ireland. And some Church of Ireland records actually go back into the 17th century. And there's quite a number from the 18th century and then most of the way through the 19th century. So unlike the Catholic records, which really only get going in about the 1820s, we, we can have as much as 50 or 100 years more for certain parishes. Not all parishes will cover that. And each parish is different. So it is important to check what remains for a parish, what date it starts when you're looking into it to, before you put in a name into a search engine and go, oh, these people aren't here. Uh, check to see that it covers the period that you're interested in. <clears throat> so 
I'm going to share my screen now. Hopefully everyone can see that. We're going to start with what's in the National Archives. And <clears throat> this is a guide on the National Archives website to Church of Ireland records, which are also known as Anglican records in Ireland. And it's mentioning here the 1870 date that I already referenced that they were public records before that date. And there are some records to uh, cover that period and they're held on microfilm. So they're not digitized in any way. You have to go into the National Archives and load up a microfilm and hope you remember how to use the microfilm reader, uh, which I always forget, and um, to look at them there. And it's a very small list. <clears throat> and it explains why they don't have anything after that period. And then it also explains that the records for Northern Ireland are held in Prony. Um, so in your own time, if this is relevant for you, it'll be worth your while having a little read of this. And I'm going to put this uh, into the chat so you can copy it. So <clears throat> they also give you a bit more detail on what's in parish records. And we're not really going to cover that in any great detail tonight. Parish records have a very similar content across the board for a baptism is going to give you the name of the baby, the names of the parents, um, a basic address for the, the family and a date of baptism. And then going on through the 19th century, it will also then perhaps include a date of birth as well. What's different with Catholic records versus Protestant records is that they almost never have the mother's birth surname on a baptismal record for the Protestant church. Whereas in the Catholic Church, they always record that. So that's something that's a little bit less helpful if you're looking at Church of Ireland people. So this is what's on the, uh, the, the website for the National Archives, I should say, is due for a big redesign next year. They've It's in train and they're hoping to launch it earlier, early in the year. So I'm interested to see what changes will come about at that point. So our main port of call in Ireland to look at Church of Ireland records uh, is the representative church body library. And again, I'm going to put this into the chat. So the representative church body library is in a place called Churchtown in the southern uh, suburbs of Dublin city. Uh, so it's not city centre based like the National Archives and the National Library. And they are a small organization um, <clears throat> with small reading room and they give you the original register books to look at when you go in there. So you're not looking at microfilms, it's a quicker process because you're flicking through a book and you're looking for a date. Um, now, they have two very important things on their website. Um, one of them is this table of Church of Ireland parish registers. And even though the website there says that it was last updated in December 2022, it was actually updated last in April 2023. So that's a free PDF that you can download. It's a very large file. and uh, We're just going to open it now. Now, this list is considered to be the definitive list of all Church of Ireland parishes in Ireland, what survives, what doesn't, and where you can access uh, those records if they still exist. Um, it was developed in conjunction with the Irish Family History Society, which is the oldest Irish Family History Society in the world. I'm sorry, I should say the Irish Genealogical Research Society, not the Irish Family History Society. There's two different ones. I'm mixing them up. The IGRS. And they developed it with uh, the representative church body library. And uh, they give a very good little summary of, oh, oh and someone else coming in, hang on. Hello, you're welcome. We're just talking about Church of Ireland records. So this parish register list um, on the RCB website um, has a little summary of the details and talks about who was involved in this project, which was launched a number of years ago now. But it is updated, and this is very important. Um, it isn't a static list, and many of the things that we look at in genealogy are static, they're not continuing to add to them. So they have a color coding system, and if this PDF has a little flaw, it's that this color coding system is only at the front of the, the page. So what I do sometimes is I, I print out this page, so when I'm flicking through it, I can remember what it means. So the yellow colored parishes 
mean that they have the original records in the RCB library. Pink records mean that they are in Prony. And it is a total of 74 parishes there. And it also says you can assume that Prony holds microfilm copies of the parishes and that they have further information. If it's in green, it's lost, uh, as in the records, the original records were destroyed in 1922, but they have subsequently been able to all, uh, locate uh, other materials that are either copies, transcripts, or some way make up for that loss. So it's not the original, but they've got something. Um, and so that's green. And then the gray color is totally lost. Nothing we can do unless we've got a time machine. Um, and if there's no color on it, it means that the parish still holds its own records in local custody. Um, <clears throat> and so um, the blue section, which is very small, says which ones are in the National Archives of Ireland. Um, so you can see here that what you get is a list and it's in alphabetical order by the name of the parish. So you're going to need to know the name of the parish that's relevant for your area. And it also tells you the diocese. So that is to help you if there is more than one place with the same name. Um, so you want to have an idea of what the diocese is as well. And if you have looked at our uh, Irish Religious Records course, which I have updated, um, you'll see that I have given you a full list of all the dioceses by both uh, Catholic and Church of Ireland uh, denominations and explained what areas they cover. And that's also something that's very easily Googled. If you just Google Church of Ireland Diocese, you get a list, um, you get a website that gives you that information. So if we take, we go back here and we see, so let's take an example of a yellow and uh, let's, let's go for Aglish. So Aglish in County Kerry uh, is in the Diocese of Ardfert and it has, again, a slight flaw that the information is only at the top of the page. Um, but it has got baptisms for 1879 to 1951. It has marriages for 1854 to 1880. And it has burial records 1879 to 1956. Important point to note about the Church of Ireland is that they usually do have burial registers and they will include people of all denominations. Catholics generally didn't have their own uh, burial grounds. So the Catholic Church doesn't usually have burial records. So when you're looking for where someone might be buried, and of course, it's a distinct possibility that you won't ever find that information. Well, they could well be in the local Protestant graveyard. So if we go back across there, Aglish, uh, it's got these records and they are in the representative church body library. And it mentions that there is some coverage at irishgenealogy.ie. Now, I hope that everyone is familiar with irishgenealogy.ie, which is the state run website that includes civil records and it has some church records as well. Um, the church records section of this website is completely static and has not been updated for 11 years. Um, so when you go to this section, you can click on this list. <clears throat> I love this optimistic update on progress of the computerization of the records. Nothing has changed in there for many years. <clears throat> but if you go to this list, it brings you to, um, you see there the date, that's, that's when it was last updated. And it's a very limited selection. So it's covering the Church of Ireland in Carlow. It's covering Roman Catholics in the Cork and Ross Diocese, which is, is basically here, it's just around surrounding Cork City. And then for Dublin, it's got Church of Ireland records, some Presbyterian records and Catholic records. For Dublin City, this is the main port of call for any religious records. And then for County Kerry uh, down in the West, it's got Church of Ireland records and it's got some Catholic records. So if I click on that Church of Ireland Kerry, it brings up a PDF and it puts it in a different uh, version there. So it, you can see here, there's Aglish that we looked at. It says that it's got records from 1879 to 1906 for baptisms. That's actually a very small period. Um, and then for uh, marriages, it goes back a little bit earlier and it has no burials. So you can see that you need to look at this list for the definitive guide and then see what's on Irish genealogy or perhaps somewhere else. And this is obviously there is much more in the representative church body library than there is on Irish genealogy in that particular parish's case. Um, so let's then take a look at a green one. We won't spend too long on this because it's all very sad. There's Arklow in, um, in Wicklow uh, in the Diocese of Glendalough and um, it uh, 
the green section means that there is some coverage somewhere. So we see that there's some coverage on Roots Ireland and there are more recent records in the RCBL. And additionally, the National Archives holds notices of marriages on microfilm. So a, a, a wide range of, of differences there. Um, and we're going to look at Roots Ireland now as well. So if you have not seen Roots Ireland before, it's an umbrella website that comprises a number of different heritage centres around Ireland who they're all their own organisation. Think of them like franchises and they have different records for um, their own specific area um, before you buy a subscription to it. And it does a 24 hour subscription for 15 euro which is about um, $18 uh, US, you can um, you can see what they have. You, you, can try, you can try it before you buy it. So you want to make sure that it has the area that you're interested in. And then don't get that subscription before you go to bed. You know, get it first thing in the morning so you maximize it. Um, if you wanted more of a subscription after you've got the first day, you can upgrade that subscription to a month subscription by adding another 15 euro, which I think is, is quite fair, actually. Um, so let's we'll just go down and we will have a look at um, uh, Wicklow, County Wicklow, and then go to online sources. And this gives us a full list. So here we're not concerned with the Catholic records today. We're interested in the Church of Ireland records. So we see here that there's actually a very substantial list of Church of Ireland records on Roots Ireland. And for the most part, they cover a very long period. So let's look at Arclow there. Now, the baptisms, again, very poor collection there and very poor collection there. But if we look at some of the other ones, look at Bray. Bray starts in the middle of the 17th century and goes up to 1900. So that's very substantial records for Bray. Um, and some of them go much earlier. So I mean, you, you never see dates like this in the Catholic Church. Well, almost never. And they're also very good at telling you if there's a gap. So there for Delgany, it's saying 1666 to 1900. But there are some gaps in this uh, 35 year period. Um, but some of them are very poor. There's only 12 years in that parish. Now, if you see very small record years, it might indicate that the parish was merged or separated from another parish. Um, this happens a lot over time. They redrew the boundaries of, of various parishes um, when the populations got too large or they got too small. So something like that might have happened if there's only a tiny record set. The other thing that, of course, could have happened is that they have lost records over time. Um, so we're not talking about necessarily the public records office fire, but they could have lost them in a more ordinary way, like a damp or um, an ordinary fire or they lost them when they were moving to a new building or the book just fell off the back of a cart, you know, when it was in the clergyman's bag or something like that. So there's always the scope for something to have been lost over time. Um, so that is the Roots Ireland uh, website. Um, and then let's just take another, I'll just scroll down so we're not spending all our time on A. Um, here's a grey one, um, Drummer Kelly in Armagh. Um, sorry, in Armagh Diocese, but in uh, County Tyrone. And um, that one is gone. So the, the grey means it just doesn't exist anymore, but they're able to tell us what did exist, which is perhaps unhelpful. <laughs> I want to also point out here on these notes that you see that some of them, they, they give an alternate name. And this is usually where a parish has merged or been uh, separated. So you see here this parish that's called Drum, and it says, look under Moor and Drum. So if we go down to uh, Moor and Drum. Very slowly, sorry. So Moor and Drum, and then it says it's gone. <laughs> That's typical, isn't it? Um, so it's just indicating the, the difference over time. Um, and these are all little hyperlinks as well. So what happens when we click on these hyperlinks? It brings us to another thing. And this is the uh, RCB's uh, online record of what exists for this parish. Um, and it's just telling you how they know that detail. Now, there's also this Anglican uh, research uh, record project. And this is uh, the work of a guy called Mark Williams, who basically took it on upon himself to start making registers 
uh, of Church of Ireland records available in a digital format. So he has them as indexed transcripts and um, the library decided to support him in this endeavor. And so periodically they update this page, which you can get to on the RCB website as well, but I'm going to put it into the chat with the other things. Um, and this is a small section of uh, parishes that exist. Let's have a look at Delgany here. Here's the uh, original registers, which are uh, uh, virginally in, in local custody and now in the RCB. And if we click on that, we get a PDF. First of all, a summary. And then we go down and we start getting names. So some people have, you see here, these, these are foundlings. So there's no first, no surname on them. And then it's in alphabetical order. And you can see that these are quite large files, but they are downloadable. Um, so uh, you can you can have them and look at them in your own time. Um, and they obviously are going back very far. So this is going some way towards helping with uh, what is what is not online. Um, so we've got our three places that really have records online are irishgenealogy.ie, Roots Ireland, and the Anglican Record Project. There are smaller sets of uh, records on the big commercial sites, Ancestry and Find My Past, but they are very limited for Church of Ireland records uh, for the most part. You also find some records on Family Search, but again, it, it's, it's a little bit limited. The good news is that the representative church body library has funding from the Irish government to digitize all of their records. So this lady here in this picture is Catherine Martin. She's the minister that is uh, has the authority over uh, heritage and genealogy and arts and culture in Ireland. And before the pandemic, uh, the representative church body library secured funding to begin digitizing all of their parish records. And they got the uh, the large, I think it's called a lizard scanner. Um, something like that. They have it, they were all trained on how to use it, they began work and then the pandemic happened. So while they still have the money, they are quite far behind on this project and it'll probably be a few years before it is complete. But the idea is that when it is complete, uh, everything that they have uh, that is, I presume there will be some data protection parameters placed on what is put online. But I would imagine that everything from the 19th century and earlier will be put online. It's not clear yet if it will go on this website or whether there'll be a new dedicated website. Um, but it, it's coming. It's just going to be um, a while away for now. So what does that mean in the meantime, if you want to, oh, it's getting dark behind me, um, if you want to access a Church of Ireland record that is not on the internet in some way. Well, you're going to have to get someone to go and get that for you. Um, so the first question is, is it a record that is in Brony in the north or is it a record that is in Dublin, either in the National Archives or in the RCBL? Um, and uh, and then you're going to have to get a researcher to, uh, to go and do that for you. So... Um, there are a number of places you can get researches. Um, the there is a, the National Library of Ireland has a researcher uh, list. They don't necessarily endorse anybody on it, um, but anybody can go on that list and you can contact people via their websites. I mean, I I sometimes do that sort of work, but I tend to focus more on on actual genealogy rather than just going and collecting a record for someone. But there's lots of people who do that kind of work on a regular basis. The RCB and the National Archives and Prony won't do that work for you. So while they will give you general information, they won't look up something for you and report back on it. Um, and uh, in the meantime, then uh, you're just going to have to wait, either get someone to do it or you're going to um, maybe plan a research trip, which will, of course, be a topic that we will come back to at many points. Uh, so that's a very brief uh, summary of the Church of Ireland uh, records for Ireland. Um, I'd love to know if anyone's got any particular questions on that topic. You guys, I'm not even sure you're there. You're all so quiet. 
<laughs> if no one has any questions, well, that's the end of today's uh, presentation and uh, you're free to go. Uh, if you do have a question, uh, you're welcome to wait until a few people have left the room if you want to ask me privately, or you can always drop me an email and I'm going to put my email address into the chat again, just in case uh, you don't have it. There it is there. Okay, uh, so any questions before we say goodbye? No? Okay. Uh, well, thanks for coming this evening, everyone. I hope you have learned something new today uh, about Church of Ireland records. And I'll see you again next month. Um, I haven't quite decided what the topic's going to be yet. And I'm always open to suggestions if somebody has one. Um, so, so please do drop me a note if you want something particular uh, focused on. And of course, if you have any questions on the course material or you're thinking about taking one of the Irish courses, I'm always open uh, to... Uh, talk to you about that too. Uh, so thanks very much everyone and uh, thanks for the comments in the chat. I see those coming in now and I'll see you all soon. Okay, bye. I'm ending the recording now. <laughs>